Do you know the seven deadly sins? More importantly, do you know the virtues that combat them? We often recall the seven deadly sins, also known as the capital vices or cardinal sins. Yet, we struggle to name the virtues that help us overcome these sins. Instead of dwelling on the sins that weigh down our spiritual life, let's shift our focus to the virtues that can help sever the chains of sin. The Catholic Church identifies seven heavenly virtues, also known as the capital virtues, contrary virtues, or heavenly virtues. These are the virtues that counter the seven deadly sins. Lust, greed, envy, anger, pride, and sloth. Understanding these sins and virtues is crucial for spiritual growth as they provide a moral compass guiding us towards a more virtuous life. Now, let's dive into each of these sins and virtues individually. First off, we have lust, a sin conquered by the virtue of chastity. Lust, in essence, is an intense longing or desire, often of a sexual nature. It can cloud our judgment, leading us astray from our spiritual path. Lust can make us lose sight of the sanctity and dignity of our own bodies and those of others. Enter chastity, the virtue that helps us overcome the sin of lust. Chastity isn't about suppressing our desires, but rather about respecting and valuing ourselves and others. It encourages us to see beyond the superficial, to appreciate the beauty of the soul, not just the body. Chastity helps us maintain focus, reminding us that we are more than just physical beings. We are spiritual entities, temples for the Holy Spirit, as the Catholic Bible tells us. By practicing chastity, we can regulate our desires, ensuring they don't control us. Remember, chastity helps calm our lustful desires and keeps our spirituality intact. Next up is greed, a sin that can be warded off by generosity. Greed, a sin often characterized by an insatiable desire for wealth and material possessions, can create a thick fog that blinds us from the true riches of life. It's a hunger that's never satisfied, a thirst that's never quenched. But there's an antidote to this relentless hunger, and it's generosity. Generosity is the virtue that challenges us to look beyond our own wants and needs and to consider the needs of others. It's the act of giving freely and abundantly without expecting anything in return. It's about sharing not just our wealth, but our time, our energy and our talents with those who need them. Through generosity, we can learn to find contentment in what we have and to find joy in the act of giving. It encourages us to share our blessings rather than hoarding them. And in doing so, we can break free from the chains of greed. Let's cultivate generosity to keep the sin of greed at bay. Moving on, we have gluttony, which is combated by temperance. Gluttony, a sin many of us are familiar with, is an excessive and uncontrolled desire for indulgence, often seen as overeating or overdrinking. It is the surrender to our appetites, often leading to self-destructive behaviors. However, there is a virtue that can help us overcome this sin, and that is temperance. Temperance is a form of self-control. It's the ability to resist our desires and not indulge in excess, it's about moderation in all things, finding a balance that allows us to enjoy life's pleasures without being controlled by them. It's about knowing when enough is enough and having the willpower to stop. By practicing temperance, we can control our desires and ward off gluttony. It's not about complete abstention, but rather about balance and moderation. Remember, it's not the food or drink itself that is sinful, but the excessive desire for them that leads to gluttony. Envy a sin that can be overcome by kindness. Envy, a corrosive emotion, is often characterized by a longing for someone else's blessings or achievements. It's a sneaky little sin that creeps into our hearts, making us feel discontented and resentful. But here's the good news. Kindness is the antidote to envy. So how does kindness help to overcome envy? Kindness, in essence, is the act of extending love and goodwill to others without any expectation of return. It's about celebrating others' successes and blessings as if they were our own. When we choose to be kind, we shift our focus from what we lack to the joy we can create for others. This shift in focus helps us to appreciate what we have rather than longing for what we don't. So next time, when the green-eyed monster of envy tries to creep into your heart, choose to be kind. Remember, by nurturing kindness, we can keep envy from poisoning our hearts. Anger, a destructive sin, tamed by meekness. Anger, 
a spontaneous reaction to perceived wrongdoing, can lead to wrath, revenge and hostility. It can shatter relationships and erode our inner peace. Yet it can be tamed by the virtue of meekness. Meekness is not about being weak. Rather, it's about being gentle, patient and composed. It's about having the strength to maintain calmness in the face of provocation. When Jesus, the epitome of meekness, was confronted by hostile crowds, he prayed for them instead of retaliating. His meekness wasn't a sign of weakness, but a testament of his strength and control. Just like Jesus, we too can embrace meekness to control our anger. When we feel the surge of anger rising within us, let's pause, take a deep breath, and let the virtue of meekness guide us. By fostering meekness, we can keep our anger in check. Pride, the sin that is humbled by humility. Pride, often considered the original and most serious of the seven deadly sins, is an excessive belief in one's own abilities. It blinds us, disconnecting us from the reality that we are not self-sufficient, but rather dependent on a power higher than ourselves. Humility, on the other hand, is the virtue that opposes pride. It's not about thinking less of yourself, but rather thinking of yourself less. It's a gentle acceptance of our limitations and an acknowledgement of our dependence on the divine. Humility clears the fog of pride, allowing us to see and appreciate the world beyond ourselves. It enables us to recognize and respect the worth and value of others. By embracing humility, we can keep pride at a distance. Lastly, we have sloth, a sin that can be defeated by diligence. Sloth, often mistaken merely for laziness, is a complex sin that manifests in neglecting responsibilities, ignoring spiritual growth and indifference towards self-improvement. It's a seductive trap, luring us into a state of apathy and inaction. But fear not, for we have the virtue of diligence as our shield. Diligence is the determined effort, the unwavering commitment to our duties, and the constant cultivation of a strong work ethic. It is the will to develop our talents and gifts rather than letting them lay dormant in the clutches of sloth. Diligence encourages us to be active participants in our life's journey, pushing us to strive for excellence not just in our worldly affairs, but also in our spiritual growth. It's a call to action, a reminder that we are the architects of our destiny. With diligence, we can overcome the sin of sloth. As we've explored, each deadly sin has a corresponding virtue to combat it. We've journeyed through the seven deadly sins and their heavenly counterparts, understanding how these virtues are not just antidotes, but transformative powers that can help us transcend our weaknesses and grow spiritually. We've seen how chastity in its purest form isn't about suppression, but about respect and reverence for our bodies and the bodies of others. It helps us combat lust, a force that can cloud our judgment and lead us astray. Generosity, we've learned, is the perfect foil to greed. It's about sharing, not just our material possessions, but also our time, energy and love. It's the recognition that true wealth lies in giving, not in hoarding. Temperance, a virtue that often goes unnoticed, is our shield against gluttony. It's about finding balance, knowing when to indulge and when to abstain, Understanding that our bodies are not just vessels of pleasure, but temples of the spirit. Kindness, a simple yet profound virtue, can dissolve the corrosive power of envy. It teaches us to celebrate the success and happiness of others, to see their blessings not as a sign of our lack, but as a testament to the abundance of the universe. Meekness, often mistaken for weakness, is our answer to anger. It's about cultivating patience, understanding and forgiveness, and realizing that true strength lies not in power, but in peace. Humility, the virtue that combats pride, invites us to recognize our limitations and appreciate the gifts and talents of others. It's about understanding that we are part of a larger whole, that we are not the center of the universe, but a small yet significant part of it. And lastly, diligence, our weapon against sloth, reminds us of the importance of hard work, perseverance and dedication. It's about nurturing our talents, fulfilling our responsibilities and making the most of the gifts we've been given. By nurturing these virtues, we can ward off these sins and grow spiritually. Remember, it's not about avoiding sin, but cultivating virtue.